American Innovation Advisor Alec Ross took time out from consulting to the US Secretary of State for a trip to Auckland. He was a keynote speaker at AUT's Project Revolution Conference on Social Media. Alex spoke to communication students about the impact the internet is having on global politics. Welcome to New Zealand, thank you for joining us today. The Pacific Island Forum this week. How much of the discussion, whether it's in pri behind closed doors or in public, will be about China's growing influence in the Pacific? You know, I don't know how much will be public and how much will be private, but what I will say is that I think that there's a lot of concern about, quote unquote, China's rise. And I think that more important than anything else is for people to understand that the United States believes that China's rise is a good thing, and it's not anything that needs to be restricted or restrained. And to the extent that people move up and out of poverty and into the economic mainstream in China, this is good for China, and this is good for the rest of the world. Citizen engagement in politics is increasingly enabled by social media. What impact does this have for developing democracies in the Pacific? I think that, that this could truly become a Pacific century. I really think that developing democracies in the Pacific can benefit from the connectedness of its citizens as well. So that there are two approaches that governments can take. They can either fear their citizens' connectivity and engagement, or they can embrace it. And in developing democracies, if governments make the right decisions to allow their people to organize themselves, to allow their people to communicate freely, then I think that it can help create a strong democracy and a better system of governance in a country. In a world where social media is so important, countries that don't have the immediate access to internet, broadband, infrastructure, Will they be left behind? What is the implication of that? It will leave them behind. It will decrease their ability to have a say. There is a, is a, it, there is a real political consequence and there is a real economic consequence that comes from being disconnected. If you are disconnected from the tools of the digital age, then your ability to compete and succeed is vastly diminished. I think that countries around the world are figuring this out. I think that, especially in the Pacific, countries are figuring out that you cannot isolate yourself from the wider world. Uh, that if, in fact, your citizens are disconnected, then it's going to have an overarching and negative impact on society itself. I think you can look at North Korea as the best example of this. The world's most disconnected country is also one of the world's most economically dysfunctional countries. Mm. And I don't think that this is, a, this is not a coincidence. During this age of digital revolution, should the government fear the internet? Or should citizens fear the government involvement with the internet? Citizens should fear government control of the internet. I think that it's an unfortunate tendency of a lot of governments to try to restrict and restrain their citizens' ability to openly communicate. And so I think that this is part of why Hillary Clinton has created an internet freedom agenda. It's actually to keep governments from doing the wrong things, to keep governments from breaking the internet. Now having said that, the only governments that ought to fear the internet are governments that ought to fear their people. So if you are a dictator and you don't have the support of your people, well then maybe you should fear the internet, but by the same consequence you probably should not be the head of state either.